turn to hurling, and I'm delighted to say Cyril Farrell is with us. Cyril, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Good morning. No, nice, bright morning down here in the West. The whole uh, country is agog with the football yesterday, but um, I think hurling people were very disappointed when we learned that Tony Kelly wasn't going to be the full the full Tony Kelly because of the injury that he suffered in the warm-up um, afterwards. Uh, Lowen said he went over on his ankle, and that really robbed the game of its its drama. I, I suspect really. Claire did well to stay in it, but ultimately there was really only one winner from about 25 minutes into that game. Yeah, well, like, uh, Wolves started very, very well, and as is referred to Tony Kelly, who was up the championship this year, has been brilliant in all the games. Like, and he was, oh, even though he played on, like, knowing him, the character of the man, like, but he wasn't the same Tony Kelly. And, you know, uh, the Watford would be out to mark him, man, mark him, but after saying that, like, he still played well enough, but not he hadn't the same influence on the game at all. And he was he was a terrible loss, Claire. There's no doubt about that. And they still scored a lot. Like Claire wound up scoring three eighteen, but the game like was gone from a long way out from from Claire. So this Waterford side have obviously managed to get back to something like the level they were at when they reached the Northern Final a couple of years ago. Um, what what is actually behind that, Cyril? Were those players just a little bit lost in the post Derek McGrath era, and they've gone? They've gone back to basics. They've gone back to exactly what it was. Like, how is how is um, Jamie Barron back to being the free-running, all-conquering midfielder? What what's changed? Yeah, well, I'd say really like you see, you know, like Derek McGrath would have been kind of very straight lines, you know, in a in a tight formation. Now, the Imkaha would too, which is different, it's more fluent. They're allowed to attack, they're playing off the cuff. If you just look at the two Binnett brothers, for example, you know, Stephen Binnett and Kieran Binnett, like, they're walking through tackles, they're playing like men possessed, you have Prunty full back, tight to work at centre back. Now, these were always there, and they are good horrors, but they seem to be re kind of revitalised, and definitely they're going for more score. Like, their, their, their scores are very big. Now, OK, what they're letting in is big as well, but like to get three goals, like, you know, goals that kind of win matches, they're knocking over over 25 points or 22 points every day like 327 the last day so they're, they're playing the, they're playing the combination game but they're also playing the long game and I suppose you'd have to say Hutchinson inside is giving them that extra threat now they still only play two men inside you know like uh, uh, they like securing even though he's picked centre forward he goes back he's kind of tracking back midfield uh, you know and Gleason's coming out centre forward but they still have the formation but they're very very good at it and they are very good hurlers and like the likes of Colin Lyons these lads and Prunty fullback they have, these lads have kind of stepped up and are taking the mantle over then you have the older guys say, like when I say older, more mature days, like you look at Kevin Borden, last in there to a ticket team, and as you refer there, like Jamie Barron, he's like a pocket rocket. He's back to himself again. So, like, they are a very, very good team and play very flashy hurling. And there's no way they'll fear Kilkenny. OK, they don't want to let in as much. But if it's going to be a lot closer game, it's not going to be kind of a walk away from Kilkenny and that semi-final by any manner of means. Yeah, in, in a weird way, I wonder how well Kilkenny feel they match up to them. Um... And Kilkenny are kind of going to be quite strong favourites for it, more than likely. But actually, it has the bang of a 50-50 game off it. Yeah, well, like, sure, you know Brian Cody, like, it doesn't matter what 15 he has been on or even what he's missing. If he is so, the so-called All-Stars missing, he'll never, if, to be fair to me, he'll never refer to those that are missing. He's always going to say, I have 15 Kilkenny men with jerseys, Kilkenny jerseys on, and they're good enough. That's his, that's his mantra. Like, you know, like the last day Paddy Deegan was absent uh, through, the, right, through COVID and, like, uh, you know... He, he never mentioned his name until it was all over. Now, he'd be on most Kilkenny team sheets. You know, there wasn't a word about him. That, that's the way he operates. Kilkenny, you know what you're going to get from Kilkenny. They'll play very hard and very, very fair. They'll set up, like, their own way, 6-2-6, six, six, shall we say. And, and they'll play. They are playing through the lines, like. But, like, they'll play it whatever you like. But definitely, Warford are on the middle tour. Like, they swamp the middle tour. They walk the ball out, you know. And it looks lovely when they walk. And they are very good at kind of popping the ball off the shoulder. And they're working that rotation policy. And, like, you'd have to see up front that they have more, you know, that they're working very hard and they're scoring bit, and definitely Hutchinson gives them that kind of the goal threat, even though to me, like, uh, Binnett has been unbelievable this year. Like, you know, every, every game I see him playing, even on the free take and everyone's saying, man, he'd be a terrible loss, which he is, but like, just show you, like, even Binnett has stepped up and to me, like, he's been early man in the match for, for Watford for every game he's playing. That win over Kilkenny was a significant step for Watford in 2017, the year they got to the All-Ireland final. How much from that year, Cyril, can you actually read into this year? Because if you talk about the golden generations that have come through in Munster counties over the last decade, I guess we were as glowing about Waterford as we would have been about Limerick in recent years. This was a, a gilded crop and they seem to have lost their way in recent years. That's 2017 summer. Can they re that this year? 
No, I'd say that, that, that that's what they're hoping to do. Like, there's no doubt about it. They're they're, they're reinvigorated, and like they 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 have been a great that crop has been a great crop of hurlers, and they won a great say minor under twenty one championship with top class hurling, top class playing. And when you want to like to say uh, Corn and these fellas have been popped on the soldiers and kind of natural hurlers to tap it over the bar. These are good hurlers, like, and they're fluent, like you know. So like they'll go in with no fears, like they're they're like Ka- Liam Cahill after having no matter what happens, he's after having a great year, his first year in, he's after like very successful in tip at underage level. So he'd be very confident in himself, you know, like uh, himself and, and, and Mickey Bevan. So like, you know, they're on a the winner already. But like to beat Kilkenny, you know, you have to have the final final with God and be going out be going out of the stadium because they're very, very hard to beat to get the killer goals, like they're capable of doing that. And I definitely uh, Liam Cahill would be worried about what they're conceding because even though they won a good game against Clare the last year, Clare still scored three years in. That would that scoreline would win a lot of matches. On the Galway tip game, then, Cyril, I guess there was a, a lot of talk before the season began about whether or not Tipperary can finally go back to back. It's something that they've struggled to do for 50 years at this point. You can put it down to a, a red card that perhaps a lot of people will have some debate about, or you can put it down to perhaps Tipperary not being quite at it this year. What's your view on why things went wrong for them on Saturday? Ah, well, there's no doubt about it. The sending off was a big was it was a big break in the game for Galway. Like you know, you see Carl Barrett. Okay, the second yellow he was going to get it, but the first was very, very dubious. No matter how you look at it, it's very hard to see what happened. Like the, the, the TV cameras don't seem to catch it at all. It's the first yellow that caused the problem. No doubt about it, uh, it, it had a big bearing on the game. But like uh, these things happen, you know, like last year, like uh, Richie Hogan was sent off. Like, so that's, that's the, you can't, if you're on a yellow, you have to be very, very careful. The big thing for Galway last weekend was that they came from behind because you had people questioning, like, could Galway, like, with, with the, the kind of, they have leads and they get caught with barely hold on. Now, the last day they went in four down at half time actually was behind six there in the second half and like the big like the big thing down in Galway here is that the feeling was like it was great to come from behind and even though they were beat by Kilkenny uh, and, and, and very hard to get caught in the, in the, in the Linster finals they still did a lot right in that game they played good hurling like there wasn't you know the, the, the supporters down here were still very confident that if they could produce their game the Galway tip games are always very very tight this time it was two points rather than a point you can't get much closer than that like and anything could have happened in the ebb flow like was, there was no one fully on top in the game everyone was getting their few minutes on top and everyone was scoring in that few minutes again the scores like you know big scores like Tipperary scored was around 224 they'd win most matches so like uh, Go will be looking at that in the minutes they have a big they have a big mountain to climb next weekend Sir a lot was made of where the referee was from surely that doesn't really matter does it? I know, listen, like, OK, maybe he's from Limerick and, you know, like, Limerick are still in the championship and uh, Galway had two Limerick men over the team. Like, that shouldn't matter, like, because these guys are going out to do a good job. And Johnny Murphy, like, he still did a good job. OK, they'll be looking at the red card. That's going to, that's the ebb and flow. Like, anyone involved in teams and tell you over manager, over a few years, that, that's, they're the break. You get some and you lose some and you get the break. So there's very, very small margins. There's no doubt about that. Like, like the the, the, one of the, the first goal, the Galway got a great goal by Cahill Manning. Like, you know, our ball, the ball was blocked down and it broke. And you know, it was, you know, he got a pass. But like, if the ball was hit perfect, it doesn't got down. It's going over the bar, maybe. Like, they are the small breaks. Like, it's just, you know, it's a little thing. Galway goalie, they have a new goalie this year. Eddie Murphy, top class goalie, it will be like a little bit experience. Blocked a great shot. Ball broke out. Shane Cooney got on the ball. Kind of diddled on it for a little minute. Lost. Next one was the back of the net. That, that that's hurling, like, and that's if people like might realise, you know, five or six points in hurling of a lead isn't as much as it is in football, if you know what I mean. It's harder to get in football. In Hurling, the six points can go in one, two shots. It can be all over, like, or you get momentum. So, like, even going back to the water game, Hudson save from, you know, that was a great save. Uh, broke out the f- field, and instead of winning the back of the net for, for clear, went up the pitch, and, and, and water got a great point. And, you know, like, it went seven up rather than just rather than two up. So, they're the tournament. There are small margins in the games, and the games, like, have been brilliant in the sense that the scoring has been unreal, and it's, you'd be on your toes the whole time. Yeah, it seems a bit unfair to, to single the referee out for where he's from. Whether or not the yellow card, the original yellow card, like, that's not because he wants a better game for Limerick in the semi final or in the final no, or that no, kind of stuff. No, 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 no. Just that maybe the GA and their wisdom maybe shouldn't have applied, like, being a Limerick man. But no, no, no referee goes out to do that. And we all have to, we'd all be giving up to them and show to look at it's a thankless job. And you'd have to say he did a good job. Like, there was no, look at it, was, it was a very clean game. There was no, like, there was plenty of hard knocks, but that's part of the game. But he wasn't for anyone. I'd say if you come to the free country, much the same. And, you know, that, that's the usual thing, or the wise, most the same. You'll get your breaks, you have to take that. Like, you know, and so, like, you know, Galway got one, there's no doubt about that. Like, like Cotter Barrett going off was a big loss. 
but like uh, the momentum comes in and uh, can they have enough views next to man but they, they did as well in the end but yes uh, in the end uh, like you know Chip were, were attacking and they did move out Jamie Cannon to, to try to get a break in the second and there's a game around the second half they, they couldn't win the ball in the half in the half hour and but for everything now Jamie that's fine but you see Dahi Burke came out as well and he'd be quite comfortable out there and he turned into the more further out of the game again he was turning up the field as well like you know so you know like they were robbing Peter to pay Paul but that, that can happen they were trying everything Paul did as well like they made a great use the, the sub is like definitely all walked in the field they were very fresh and kind of got flew around the pitch like sometimes that works for you sometimes it doesn't so you know, back to the drawing board over the next set well, What's the expectancy levels like in Galway at this point Cyril is it Lee McCarthy or else it's a failure or is there a sense that actually this year could be a stepping stone Oh, well, like everyone is very happy. It's like, look, it's been a very unusual year in Torres. The lead were just starting to come right and there's new management in it. Everyone seems to be quite happy with them. The players are playing, you know, they have settled down, playing well. And we really know everyone is happy. Okay, they'd be disappointed to lose that Linster final, but they still played very well. And like they've had a good year and look, they'd love to get back in. They would love to get back into a the final again because this, this team is quite good. But like they are improving the whole time now, whether the three weeks in a row catches them out or not. And, you know yourself. You, you, everyone wants to win, and you, you, you forget. You, it's, you, you forget about the big good, the, the days you win when you lose. That's the way it is. That you look at Cork yesterday, beaten by Tip in a, in a right good game in football, and sure their victory over Kerry is put back into the into the back. You, you forget about it. That's 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 life. The only thing is this year, the the, the All Ireland will be over very early in the sense that the, the new one is going to start early. So it's a short, it's a short rain no matter who wins the All Ireland. It's been unusual. But we have to say, to be fair to the players and managers of the teams, it's, it's great entertainment and it's keeping us going in these dark days. 100%. Cyril, great to have you with us this morning. Thanks a million. OK, God bless. It's Cyril Farrell giving us some thoughts this morning on um, a brilliant weekend's hurling as well, of course, unless you happen to be from uh, either of the teams who were knocked out, Clare or Tipperary. OTBAM live in association with Gillette. Good morning to start with Gillette, giving you the confidence to tackle the day ahead. I just want to read these comments. So I, I um, already read this one, but I'll read it again for uh, the, re the rebuttal. Um, I will now as soon as everybody stops moving the screen on me. So, uh, Joe Crowley, as a Corkonian, very disappointed losing to Tip. That was their final. Dennis Ryan, quick as a flash. It was Cork's final too, pal. And you were soundly beaten. A shambles these days in both codes, particularly hurling. Corkness, eh? <laughs> That's the sound of a, a man who might have had a few quid on Cork, I think, yesterday.